Hi, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hertel. So this week, I want to get into the mindset that you should have moving forward for the rest of the year. See, I think that you should be very excited that it's September, okay? Because the last four months of the year, in my opinion, is what separates the good agents from the great agents, okay? What I mean by that is, now you get into that time where agents start tailing off because it's the end of the year, and they've one of two things have happened. They've either hit their goals for the year, and they think, ah, all right, I can kind of coast for the rest of the year. They don't have the mentality of, man, I can make this the best year I've ever had. Or they haven't hit their goals for the year, they've pretty much crapped out all year, and now they're sitting there going, well, you know, it's too late in the year for me to hit my goals, I'd rather just, you know, get really cranked up again at the beginning of next year, okay? So either way, you're gonna start seeing your competition die off, that means you get to snap right back into it and say, this is my time to take over the market. And here's the other thing, Make no mistake, the beginning of 2018 is caused by the end of 2017. So if you look back and say, well, my first quarter wasn't very good, or at least my first two months weren't very good, it's because you didn't do the work the fourth quarter of the previous year, all right? So have that mentality knowing that these last four months, you should be excited, you should be ready to go, knowing that a lot of other agents are tailing off, and that means you get to go in and take control of the market, because here's the thing, doesn't matter what time of year it is, people are still buying and selling homes, okay? So you have to have that mentality so you can go in there and take advantage of the market right now. So have that mentality. So what I put together here today are some numbers and some things that you should go off of in order to dominate the market for the last four months of the year, okay? So I know it's numbers and people hate numbers, but bear with me, you're gonna like this, all right? So three things Thursday this week is about you're prospecting, you're practicing, and you're previewing, and the numbers that you can put together and how it's gonna affect your business. All right, so let's jump right into it. So, start, including today, there's 82 working days remaining in the year. When I include working days, I'm just saying Monday through Friday, okay? There's 82 of those for the rest of the year. There's 33 non-working days, okay, which is Saturdays and Sundays. Now I get everyone's schedule's different, but just for all intents and purposes, let's just assume this. That's Monday through Friday, that's how many working days there are. Saturday and Sunday, that's how many non-working days there are, all right? Let's say that in the last four months of the year, you're gonna take two months, I'm sorry, two months, two weeks vacation, all right? Whether it be holidays, some of you are taking two months off, but that's a whole different story. Now let's account for two weeks vacation, right? holidays, New Year's, all these other different things, right? So let's say that you're gonna take two weeks vacation off the last four months of the year, okay? So let's account those 10 working days that you're taking off. So let's go off of this. 72 working days and 43 non-working days. That's a pretty good schedule, right? So essentially you work two days, you get a day off. That's a good schedule. I think a lot of us would sign up for that, right? If that was our schedule. So let's just assume that. For the starting today, towards the rest of the year, you have 72 working days, 43 non-working days. So think about this, prospecting. Is it reasonable that you can prospect three hours a day? Reasonable, okay? That seems fairly reasonable for our schedules, that I can set aside three hours a day to prospect. All right, so if you did that three hours a day, that would get 216 hours of prospecting, all right, for those 72 days, 216 hours. Now, is it reasonable to say that if you did distraction-free prospecting, you could make seven contacts an hour, right? You weren't on your email, you weren't on your Facebook, you weren't on any of these other different things, working on that, working on that, kind of making a call here, just distraction-free for three hours, could you make seven contacts an hour? I think that's fairly reasonable. So if you prospected for 216 hours, made seven contacts an hour, that's 1,512 contacts. So think about this. If you talk to 1,512 people, aren't you just by chance going to bump into somebody that's looking to buy or sell real estate? Right, I mean, just by chance. If you just talk to 1,512 people, you're just by chance gonna find someone that's gonna buy and sell real estate, right? You have to, okay? So here's what I also want you to figure out. Is what's your ratio to closings? Meaning how many contacts does it take you to get a closing, right? What's your average commission? And then ask yourself, how would that change your year? If you talk to 1,512 people, let's say it takes you 200 contacts to get a closing, okay? That's roughly eight closings for the rest of the year. Let's say your average commission is $10,000. That's 80 grand 
for the last four months of the year. Would you be okay with that? Would you be okay making an additional $80,000 the last four months of the year if that was your closing ratio? I think most of us would say, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. And all you have to do is for 72 days, prospect three hours a day, seven contacts an hour, it's 1,512 contacts, and that can get you another 80, if your commissions are higher, depending on your area, might be 100 grand, so on and so forth. So, that's, and so just think about that. Think about, that's what I gotta do. Distraction free prospecting for three hours a day for 72 days for the rest of the year. How can that change my year, all right? Practice. For those 72 days, practice one hour a day. Now here's what I want you to practice. Scripts and objection handlers for 30 minutes, listing presentation for 30 minutes, okay? You can do that. Scripts and objection handlers practice for 30 minutes and also listing presentation for 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour straight. It could be a 30 minutes beginning of the day, 30 minutes end of the day, however you want to do it. But an hour a day of practice, all right? That gives you 72 hours of practice for the rest of the year. So let me ask you this. If you practice 72 hours for the rest of the year, would you be pretty good at what to say and how to say it? You'd have to be, right? If you give real practice 72 hours for the rest of the year, you're gonna be pretty good at what to say and how to say at a high level, okay? And that's only gonna help you increase your business even more, going back to those 1,500 contacts. Again, if you know what to say and how to say at a high level, your ratio is gonna be better, okay? So, and your listing presentation. If you get really good at your listing presentation, how's that gonna affect your closing ratios? Okay, instead of 200 contacts, maybe you need less because your listing presentation closing ratio is gonna go up. Because here's the thing too, we've talked about this before, we are in a tight market. It's tough to get listings. You can't afford to give a B-level listing presentation. You're in sales, so I imagine right now you could just wing a B-level listing presentation. It's not good enough nowadays. You have to give an A-level every time. You can only do that by practicing it. Plus it changes your mentality when we go back to prospecting before. If you're really good at something, you can't wait to show it off, right? When, you know, when I'm a kid, I'm playing basketball and I got my jumper down, I couldn't wait to go to the park and show it off like, hey, look, out my, look at my new jumper. Same thing with the listing presentation. If you get really good at that, you can't wait to show it off. You're gonna be prospecting all day. I gotta get in front of someone. I wanna do this listing presentation because I got it nailed, right? It changes your mentality but you can't get there unless you practice, all right? So one hour a day, scripts and objection handlers, half hour, listing presentation for half hour. Okay, now we go down to the third thing, previewing. Preview two homes a day. If you do that for the next 72 days, or not next 72 days, the 72 days, working days for the rest of the year, that's 144 homes previewed. If you preview 144 homes, for the rest of the year. Will you be pretty knowledgeable about your market? Now you should be previewing more, but let's, let's just break it down, because I know some of you don't preview at all. Let's just break it down to two. Two a day. It's 144 homes you're previewing in your market. Would you be pretty knowledgeable about your market? I would say so. More knowledgeable than at least than most of the people who aren't previewing at all, okay? And if you got pretty knowledgeable about your market, would that help increase your production? Yeah, it would, right? Because going back to the prospecting, you've now, know your market better than everyone else, that's gonna help your ratios when it comes to prospecting. So imagine, you're previewing so you know the market better than everyone else, you're practicing, you know what to say and how to say at a better level, you go prospect, you're gonna generate more leads, more appointments, all right? It all flows through, okay? So imagine that, now let me ask you this, how long does it really take to preview two properties? 15, 20 minutes or so, if they're fairly close together. I'm gonna just say an hour. Let's say it takes you an hour because you gotta drive there, preview the property, drive back to the office, an hour, right, to go preview two properties. So let's break this down. 72 working days remaining of the year, you get 43 non-working days, so that's pretty good. You're gonna prospect three hours a day, you're gonna role play one hour a day, and you're gonna preview it's another hour. So that's a total of five hours. So everything that we've just gone together is just five hours a day. Not even a full work day. You get three hours if you're gonna work an eight hour day to do admin work, okay, go on listing presentations, all these other different things that you have to do. You get three hours. I think it's pretty reasonable that you can do all that stuff in three hours. I mean, how much admin work do you really have to do? Especially if you're utilizing a transaction coordinator, a mortgage loan officer, an escrow. If you're really utilizing those people, how much admin work do you really have to do? Okay, not much. But we use that as an excuse. We'll have all this admin work to do. And it takes us five hours to do it, okay? But we've created a schedule. Stick to this for the rest of the year, for 72 working days, for the rest of the year, stick to that. Three hours of prospecting, no distractions, an hour of practicing, an hour of preview, and that's just five hours a day. Stick to that schedule and see what happens the last four months of the year. I'm telling you, 
This is the time to get excited because your competition is going away. Okay, they're mailing it in for the rest of the year. Now's your time to get going. And like I said, the beginning of 2018 starts with the end of 2017, all right? You want a great first quarter, you gotta close 2017 out strong. So stick to that. Three hours a day of prospecting, hour of practice, an hour of previewing, I'm telling you, makes the biggest difference. It's the difference between a good agent and a great agent, all right? So focus on that. That's your three things Thursday for the week. Please subscribe to my channel so you get all my videos, usually a couple a week. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week.